Drugs and booze brought a sudden and brutal end for many of those who dominated the British music scene in the early 80s. But my guest today picked himself up and started again. He's now written a new musical called Taboo after one of the wildest clubs ever to open its doors in London. How hard was it to look back and what are the lessons he's learned? Boy George, a very warm welcome to the programme. Hello. How painful was it, looking back to some of those um, early years? There are some scenes in the show that I tend to pop to the bar during. Because there's a couple of scenes that I don't particularly enjoy watching, but... Uh, you wrote them. I actually didn't write them. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> the book was written by a guy called Mark Davis. I mean, I helped with the book. What I did was write the music and, and you know, help with the narrative. Um, and it's not really a kind of... It, it's not really based solely around my, my life story. I mean, it's the story of several characters, people like Lee Bowery, who is the man on my jacket, Philip Salon, Marilyn, Steve Strange. It's about a lot of people. I didn't want it to be a kind of Bully Holly story type project. So people, who's, people who suffered badly in, in those years. I mean, you've, ex you've said uh, sort of a couple of weeks ago, I've experienced real failure and it's a fantastic reality check. Yeah. Did you, how low did you really have to go? What I meant by that was that, you know, there are certain artists like Madonna or Prince or Elton John who live in these kind of cultural bubbles permanently. I'm not saying I don't live in one to some extent because, you know, I lead a privileged life. But uh, I do happen to get on the bus occasionally, go on the tube. I do sort of make sure that I live partly a realistic existence. And that's a choice I made at the height of my, you know, after Culture Club, I just got so bored of not being able to walk down the road that I kind of had to readjust myself to being a normal person, whatever that word means. But the bad times, the drugs, for instance, do you, do you think back I wrote a great times? book in 95 called Take It Like a Man. You can read that. If you, want to go, if you want to go down that road. No, but tell me, do you think back to those years? Uh, I don't think about it, but obviously every time I do an interview, I get asked about it. So it's one of those things that goes away in your own personal life, but of course in your public life. People tend to keep asking you every time you do an interview about that period. It's ancient history to Because me. they do go back to the book and things like you say, well, it was just a sport no less dangerous than joyriding or surfing on the roofs of trains. Did is I that... say that? Yes, you did, <laughs> in the book. I mean, is that really the way you looked at it, as a sport? Well, I think at the time, you know, when you're in that kind of state, you're not thinking logically, you know, to, in, in your own mind, you're having fun, you're, you're partying, you're not thinking logically. So, of course, in hindsight, it's easy to look back and say, well, that was a mistake, but at the time, you know, when you're drugged out of your mind, you're not thinking like a logical human being. So, in that respect, you know, it is like joyriding or, you know, sort of teetering on the edge of a cliff. Yeah, it's very much so. And establishing your independence. I mean, you said nobody had the right to tell me what to put into my body, and I thought I was holding it together. Well, the laws on, on you know, drug use are changing now as we speak, you know, I mean, they say that cannabis is going to be legalised, possibly ecstasy. So maybe there is some truth in that, you know. I mean, people eat meat. I don't eat meat. I don't go to restaurants and jump up on tables when people are having a steak. And I find that equally offensive. Would it be hard to go back to drugs or is... Um, do, 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 or perhaps you've never left? Would it be hard to go back? Yes. <laughs> no, I don't probably really not. No? But I don't intend to in this lifetime. The death of Michael Rudetsky in 1986 was, was probably the low point, wasn't it? Well, a lot of people well, died. I mean, I lost three or four very good close friends. Mark Vautier, Trojan. There were a lot of casualties at that period, yeah. It was a very painful time for me. And that was, I guess, the biggest reality check. You know, that's when it sort of got very serious and, and I had to kind of really look at what I was doing, you know, because the spotlight of the media was on me. It was like being a rat in a corner. And the sort of headlines at the time were, you know, find him. I mean, I was being hunted by the media, so it was a bit hard to avoid the issue, as it were. How much do you blame yourself for his death? Um, I mean, there was I'm a... Gonna, was I'm a... not going to answer that question. Why not? Because I, I just don't want to. Is it too painful? To, um, to, I think to, it's, to you know, what I've, what I've tried very hard to do with the whole Michael Redetsi thing is not to talk about it publicly because 
um, of his family. And I'm not going to do it now, and I haven't done it in the past. When you came back from New York in 1986, you, you, I mean, you say in your book, I denied reports that I was a heroin addict, I'm not guilty, I've always tried to tell kids to stay off drugs. That wasn't actually true at the time, was it? It had been true to a point. <laughs> In the early part of my career, I was very anti-drugs, and then, you know... And you say it's not true and never will be, but, I mean, it, uh, it was true, wasn't it? And you said, well, this And your time, point is what, though? This time, I managed, <laughs> this, this time I managed to wangle my way out. But in a certain sense, you, you were asking to be sort of publicly exposed, weren't you, in a way? Well, I guess there is a saying, wherever, wherever you are in your life is where you want to be, you know, and I think what happens to us good and bad, you know, and I think we all are sort of, you know, masters of our own destiny. And I guess there was a part of me that wanted to be caught. I think there's probably some truth in that, definitely. Would you, th would you think it was stupid if you took drugs now, for instance? Uh, yeah, very. So you wouldn't do it? Well, now, like, and in, in this no, moment, not in the studio, on TV, but, but, I think it would be a really bad idea. No, but now, now <laughs> in general, now in general, would you think it was, it was a stupid thing to do? Um, do I think it's a Yeah, possibly, yeah. I think it would be a very, be a very stupid thing to do, but there you go. But you wouldn't... Uh, so you wouldn't do it? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> looking back at those difficult times and looking at the musical, people could be tempted to ask, well, what was so good about those times? Well, it was a time of if great it was time creativity. Of painful and ruined lives. Oh, it wasn't just that, though. I mean, you know, you know obviously... But you say you, you lost friends and yes, you lost people course, who, but then, who were close you know, to you. But we're talking about a 20-year period here, you know. I mean, you know, things were painful, but there were also lots of joyous adventures. I mean, you know, I was in a very successful band. I was travelling the world, making a lot of money, making music, being creative. So it wasn't all misery. What was the influence, do you think, of, of um, your music on that music on those times? I mean, on, on fashion, on well, pop, I think, on I think video? Well, I think if you look at the political kind of tone of the 80s, you had Thatcherism, which was right-wing. And I think that people always need something to rally against. If you look at the current government, it's a bit of a nothing government. It's not one thing or the other. And that's why I think a lot of artistic expression has been so bad over the last 10 years, because people have nothing to fight against. Back then, you, you really well, felt... they could have done, couldn't they, over the last ten years? I mean, they had Not really. Bosnia, they had Rwanda, there were plenty, I'm talking about plenty of things I'm, going I'm talking on, about in but... England and America, you know, that we've, we've had kind of a nothing sort of atmosphere politically, and I think that's affected art greatly.